Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, I'll be sure, Heavy D, and Puffy, and Kim. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. You're looking at live pictures from the home of Sean Combs, also known as Diddy. HSI is on the scene right now. We also do have video from his home in Los Angeles. HSI Los Angeles is on scene there. We gonna get you and your little dog too. You know the saying that goes, where there's some, there's fire? Well, Jaguar Wright dropped some bombshell concerning Diddy's alleged involvement in the demise of Kim Porter, and it's causing quite a stir. So, what exactly did she say? In a revealing 2022 video, Jaguar Wright uncovered significant details about the original five trailblazers of Uptown Records, Andre Harrell, Heavy D, Al B. Schur, Puffy, and Kim Porter, often hailed as the Mount Rushmore members. According to Jaguar Wright, Kim Porter, Andre Harrell, and Heavy D, tragically succumbed to mysterious circumstances. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. Andre Harrell is dead. Jaguar Wright also pointed out a brush with death experienced by Al B. Schur, indicating a pattern among the group. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? Furthermore, Wright disclosed that three out of the four deceased individuals were in the process of writing books before their untimely deaths. Al B. Schur, on the other hand, was actively involved in creating a documentary. However, Jaguar Wright hinted at suspicion surrounding the lone surviving member, Diddy, formerly known as Puffy, insinuating a sense of skepticism regarding his involvement or knowledge surrounding the circumstances of their deaths. For context, Uptown Records was founded in 1986 by the visionary Andre Harrell, a former rapper who sought to redefine the landscape of R&B and hip hop. Uptown quickly became a powerhouse in the industry, nurturing talent and shaping the sounds of a generation. The early years of Uptown Records were marked by a string of successes that solidified its reputation as a breeding ground for groundbreaking artists. From the infectious grooves of Heavy D and the Boys to the soulful stylings of Al B, sure, and the groundbreaking sound of Guy Uptown Records was at the forefront of the emerging new Jack Swing movement. Their artists dominated the charts, earning critical acclaim and commercial success in equal measure. Tragedy struck in 1990 with the untimely death of Trouble T. Roy, a member of Heavy D and the Boys, who fell victim to an accidental fall while on tour. The loss reverberated throughout the music community, underscoring the fragility of life and the bonds forged between artists and their fans. Despite the challenges, Uptown Records continued to thrive, welcoming a new generation of talent into its fold. Among them was a young intern named Sean Puffy Combs, whose ambition and vision would shape the future of the label and the industry at large. Combs worked tirelessly with acts like Joe DC, Father MC, and Mary J. Blige, blending hip-hop and R&B in groundbreaking ways that would define the sound of the 1990s. The early 1990s saw Uptown Records reach new heights of success, with Mary J. Blige emerging as a breakout star with her debut album, What's the 411? The album, produced by Combs, showcased Blige's raw talent and emotional depth, earning her the title of the Queen of Hip Hop Soul. It was a testament to the collaborative spirit and innovative approach that defined Uptown Records under Harold's leadership. However, tragedy struck once again with the deaths of three iconic figures associated with Uptown Records. In 2011, the world mourned the loss of Heavy D, the charismatic rapper and actor whose larger-than-life persona had captivated audiences for decades. His passing marked the end of an era and served as a reminder of the enduring impact of his music and influence. Then, in 2018, the sudden and unexpected death of Kim Porter sent shockwaves through the music community. As the mother of three children with Sean Diddy Combs, Porter had been a central figure in the Uptown Records family, known for her grace, kindness, and unwavering support of the artists and visionaries who passed through its doors. Finally, in 2020, the world said goodbye to Andre Harrell, the visionary founder of Uptown Records whose passion and dedication had propelled the label to greatness. While the deaths of these iconic figures were heartbreaking, fans initially believed they passed away from natural causes. However, Jaguar Wright 
Wright shed light on what really went down behind the scenes, especially concerning Kim Porter's demise. Apparently, before Kim's unfortunate demise, the mother of four was planning to release a tell-all book about her high-profile relationships in the music world, and this has certainly made fans believe it was a possible motive for Kim to be unalived. However, the brunette beauty's hairstylist, Lisa Pope, claimed that though her friend did dream of writing a book, it would have been about how to raise well-mannered children in Hollywood. I can attest to the amazingly well-mannered children she raised, Lisa wrote a little over a week after Kim's passing. Our strongest bond was our role as parents. However, fans were not convinced by Lisa's claim since it was evident that Kim had witnessed a lot of things while she was with Diddy, and she might have wanted to expose his evil deeds. You see, the two had actually met when Kim was an A&R executive at Uptown Records, and she was working there as a receptionist. They started dating back in 1994 and continued to have an on-off relationship for 13 years. In 1998, Kim and Diddy welcomed their first child together, a son named Christian Casey, and Diddy also adopted Quincy, Kim's son with Al B. Shore. However, Kim Kim and Diddy broke up just a year later because Diddy had started a secret relationship with Jennifer Lopez while Kim was pregnant with Christian. Diddy and J-Lo dated for two years before he and Kim reconciled. Kim later claimed that Diddy's relationship with J-Lo was just a publicity stunt and that Diddy got caught up in the hype. Three years later, Kim and Diddy welcomed twin daughters, Delilah Starr and Jesse James, in 2003. However, Diddy refused to marry Kim, claiming that he just wasn't ready. In his December 2006 interview with Essence magazine, Diddy said, I know she deserves to get married, but I'm just not ready. He also added, it's that I'm just learning how to be a good boyfriend. When I'm finished with this step, I'll move on to the next. In any case, Diddy and Kim's relationship took a significant turn during one of their separations when Kim entered into a connection with Shakir Stewart, an individual employed at Def Jam. The revelation of Kim's involvement with Shakir reportedly triggered a furious reaction from Diddy, leading to a heated argument that left Kim with a broken nose. Apparently, the dispute unfolded on on Combs' yacht in San Trope, prompting the involvement of a specialist plastic surgeon from Geneva to address Kim's broken nose. Intriguingly, Kim later suggested an alternative explanation, asserting that her facial injury resulted from accidentally striking her nose on a table. The narrative takes a darker turn on November 1, 2008, when Shakir Stewart was discovered dead in his Atlanta residence, the victim of a self-inflicted shot wound, according to official determinations. However, suspicions of foul play swiftly emerged, with fingers pointed at Diddy. Allegations of a previous violent encounter between Diddy and Shakir surfaced, with a source informing media takeout that Diddy had previously assaulted Shakir severely. The source claimed that Diddy, upon discovering Kim's association with Shakir, tracked him down to his hotel and proceeded to f him without the presence of security, resulting in a brutal beating. The controversy surrounding Kim, Diddy, and Shakir intensified, raising questions about the nature of their relationships and the events leading up to Shakir's tragic demise. The whispers of foul play persisted, challenging the official ruling of and adding layers of complexity to an already intricate narrative. Meanwhile, just months after Kim welcomed their twins, Delilah and Jesse, she and Diddy broke up for the final time in July 2007. Kim Porter says she dumped Diddy. I feel like in a statement to the TV show The Insider, she says she decided to end what she calls her on-again, off-again relationship with Sean Diddy Combs. Kim moved out of the New York apartment she shared with Diddy, and it was later revealed that Kim dumped Diddy after he admitted that he had welcomed a secret love child with his longtime associate, Sarah Chapman. Despite all of this drama, Kim and Diddy remained amicable and continued to co-parent their children, and Kim was said to be the glue of the family. But it happened that, just a tad over two weeks before the heartbreaking news of Kim's passing, she attended a Hollywood event with Diddy. What was this grand affair, you ask? None other than the glitzy premiere of Netflix's The Holiday Calendar, a film starring none other than Kim's own son, Quincy Brown. Now here's where the plot thickens. Rumor has it that Kim might not have been too thrilled about gracing the event with her presence, and who could blame her? Word on the grapevine is that her health might not have been in the best shape. But guess who was allegedly playing the role of the relentless persuader? None other than Diddy, the man with a penchant for the perfect family facade. Seems like Diddy had his sights set on flaunting that picture-perfect image of his blended family, and he wasn't letting a little thing like Kim's well-being stand in the way. It's almost like he wanted to orchestrate a live photo shoot to prove his undying support for his adopted son, Quincy, all while compromising on Kim's well-being. So, in this elaborate tableau captured in Los Angeles on October 30th, Quincy, the adopted but not really son of Diddy, was smack in the center of it all. Surrounding 
him were his then 11-year-old twin sisters, looking all cute and coordinated. Diddy's son, Justin, was conveniently placed next to his dear old dad, while Kim, the supposed unwilling participant, was positioned beside her ex, possibly with a forced smile. You see, the fact that Kim went out for this event and probably drunk some bubbly might have made her flu symptoms worse. According to the coroner's report, weeks before her tragic demise, Porter had complained of a sore throat which developed into a fever of 102 degrees. Fans are now suggesting that the fateful night out during the peak of flu symptoms might have played a role in her tragic demise. Medical professionals worldwide warn against disregarding flu symptoms, especially in favor of late night outings consumption. The combination of flu symptoms and intake can lead to a compromised immune system, delayed recovery, and heightened risk of complications. Experts underline the importance of rest, proper hydration, and abstaining alcohol when battling the flu. Moreover, the risk of spreading the flu virus to others cannot be overlooked, particularly when mingling in crowded social settings. Porter's decision to disregard this concern may have unwittingly placed others in harm's way. While it's critical to note that no official confirmation has linked Porter's night out to her tragic passing, the speculation alone serves as a stark reminder of the potential consequences of neglecting one's health for socialization. In any case, the model and actor died unexpectedly on the 15th of November 2018 after contracting a form of pneumonia. Now you might be thinking, how could Diddy have known that she was sick? Wasn't he her ex? Well, Diddy knew all along Long that Kim was sick. He revealed this while speaking in a 2018 May issue of Essence magazine, where he began by saying that his world was turned upside down after Porter's death and revealed she told him she wasn't feeling well three days before she passed away. Three days before she passed, she wasn't feeling well, he said. She had the flu, and she sent the kids over to my house so they wouldn't get sick. One night I was checking on her, and she was like, Puffy, take care of my babies, he candidly revealed. She actually said that to me before she died. Many people felt that her demise was highly suspicious, and one of them was Kim's ex-husband, Al B. Sure. In July 2020, Al shared a since-deleted video of himself and wrote, I just found this footage from the morning I learned of Kim Porter's M and how it ripped the soul from my physical body. I was on my way to film the pre-show packages for the BT Awards with Tisha Campbell Martin and Tachina Arnold when I receive a call from PR icon Queenie Donaldson asking me if I was okay and did I hear the news. I had no clue. I do know very clearly that hashtag Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. That's some BS. Really? This is where I get in trouble. We just celebrated our son Quincy's new deal and Christmas special with Netflix, and she was in fantastic health as well laughing seeing me and Diddy's mutual exchange at the theater. I'm going to leave it here. In another post that has also been since deleted, Al revealed that Porter was running from something prior to her passing and that he encouraged her to call the FBI for help. She had confided in him about how scared she was about someone and that that person was making life hard for her, and that's why he had suggested she look for legal help, but Kim might have been too scared to involve the police. Talking about that incident, Al took to social media and uploaded a photo of the former couple and captioned the shot. She sent me this saying, life imitating art, art imitating life. Now it all makes sense. Interestingly, mere months after sharing that post, Al found himself in a hospital bed grappling with multiple organ failure. Enduring a two-month-long coma, he eventually defied the odds and pulled through. Additionally, earlier this year, Ed Winter, the coroner who allegedly performed the autopsy on Kim Porter, died under mysterious circumstances. On March 19th, TMZ announced that Winter had passed away in his LA residence from natural causes. He passed away at the age of 72. He investigated the deaths of multiple celebrities including Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Brittany Murphy, Tom Petty, and as some people believe, Kim Porter. Meanwhile, other fans are claiming that prior to his demise, Winter was asked to re-examine the investigation surrounding her death. Now netizens are speculating that Diddy played a role in the death of this coroner. So, Ed Winter, famed celebrity celebrity coroner, just so happened to also die after he was instructed to reopen Kim Porter's case to verify her original cause of death? One fan questioned. A second fan claimed, this is the tip of the iceberg. The coroner, Ed Winter, who did Kim Porter's autopsy dies just as calls from her family to exhume her body. It's important to note that Diddy was never implicated in Winter's death by law enforcement. However, this apparent lack of connection between Diddy and the investigation has left many fans puzzled. Adding to the intrigue is the 
absence of any reports confirming Winter's involvement in Kim's autopsy. Anyway, just six months after the demise of Kim Porter, did he grace the May 2019 issue of Essence magazine where he spoke about his grieving process. I would be just like walking around crying just all the time, he told Miami. It just hurts so bad, you know what I'm saying? I was just like not moving. I had like isolated myself, you know? It was definitely, it was rough. I really could not control crying. I would be anywhere and just any memory would just get me and really break me down. Additionally, Diddy allegedly felt remorseful for being unfaithful to Kim when they were together. The betrayal really affected Kim, Diddy said, before admitting that he feared that he may lose his best friend at one point in their relationship. As time went on and Diddy was able to face his new reality, he championed his religious connection as the factor that pulled him through. Talking to God is what really got me through it, he expressed. I had a wonderful life in time with Kim. I have beautiful kids. I'm just like the luckiest man in the world to even have had the experience to have her in my life. However, Diddy's former bodyguard Jean laughed at the appearance of grief Diddy puts up about Kim's death. He said Diddy broke Kim Porter's nose one time. You used to be a WB, he said, referring to Diddy. Talk about how you used to beat Misa Hylton. Talk about how you tried to beat Kim's A. Jean was asked about a song Diddy released titled Kim Porter, and Jean replied, I think that's a great thing to do for the woman you claim to love. Then laughing, Jean added, to honor the woman who gave you a scar on your wrist for the rest of your life that you could always look at and remember. He added that if Diddy ever tries to forget Kim, all he has to do is look at his wrist. Recounting the incident, Jean said, He wanted to, you know, put his hands on her in the wrong way. And Kim took one of those court screws and ripped his wrist up and hit an artery. Gene added that their relationship was violent and Kim was not allowed to be with anyone else. He said that Diddy could make it very uncomfortable if Kim tried to move on with anybody else. The interviewer then told Gene that it appears Diddy now regrets subjecting Kim to AB, but the ex-bodyguard said the rapper was just doing it for the public. It does look like he, you know, is living with a regret when it comes to her. My man coulda, woulda, all that look good for the media. In any case, fans believe that justice will soon be served for Kim Porter, especially with the ongoing investigations on Diddy. You see, a few weeks ago, federal agents raided the rapper's multi-million dollar homes in Miami and Los Angeles. Homeland Security investigations seized Combs' phones in Miami before he was scheduled to depart for a trip to the Bahamas. While the investigation is ongoing, a source close to the investigation told NBC News that the raid was connected to allegations of ST and SA and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics of Three women and one man had been interviewed by federal officials in Manhattan in relation to the investigation. The source shared, in a March 25th statement to E! News, a rep for Homeland Security Investigations said that they had executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation and would provide further information as it becomes available. This raid followed recent essay allegations made by Diddy's producer. According to the lawsuit, Rodney Lil Rod Jones worked on Combs's most recent album, Love, and lived with him between September 2022 and November 2023. Jones alleges he was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized and touching of his A by Mr. Combs. On one occasion, the lawsuit claims, Jones woke up and disoriented in bed with Combs and two S workers. He alleges the music mogul him. The complaint also claims that, in his role as Combs's videographer, Jones secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. The illegal activity the suit alleges includes acquiring soliciting S workers, providing lace drinks to minors, and SA. Jones's suit named several other defendants, including Combs's son, Justin, Combs's chief of staff, Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO, Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO, Ethiopia Habdemariam. Combs's lawyer, Sean Hawley, denied Jones's allegations. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies, she told People. In his suit, Jones says that he feared Combs was him, and that fear became a reality when actor Cuba Gooding Jr. allegedly assaulted him during an outing on the music mogul's yacht. The actor began touching and fondling Mr. Jones' legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his 
bats in his shoulders, the complaint alleges. Mr. Jones was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from Mr. Gooding Jr. He rejected his advances, and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. An amended version of the lawsuit filed in late March names Gooding Jr. as a defendant, people reported. The lawsuit also says that Combs's circle enabled his behavior in order to have access to celebrities that he knew and socialized with. Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties, the suit read. In any case, with these investigations, many people feel that a lot of Diddy's dark past will be uncovered. And maybe, just maybe, we can finally understand what happened to Kim Porter and other members of Uptown Records. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.